welcome back to the MQTT Sparkplug Essential video series. Today we are going to explore what requirements are needed in order for you to get started with an MQTT Sparkplug infrastructure. So Sparkplug relies heavily on the MQTT standard. As you know, there are two MQTT standards now that are used widely, which is MQTT 3.1.1 and MQTT 5. For MQTT Sparkplug, you are required to use MQTT 3.1.1. And it's very important that you're using a 100% specification conformant MQTT implementation. This means, as well as on the MQTT client side, but also on the MQTT broker side, it's required that all features are supported. The hard requirements for an MQTT Sparkplug infrastructure are quality of service zero and one support, retained message support, last will and testament support, and the support for a flexible security system. For the quality of service zero and one support, what this means is your MQTT broker, as well as your clients, are required to support at most once delivery, which is quality of service zero, and at least once delivery, which is quality of service one. You need it because for, for once you have the data packets, which are sent with quality of service level zero, but also we have important state management messages, which are required to use uh, quality of service level one. So make sure that your MQTT broker and your client support these features. And the second, we have retained messages. For people who are not familiar with retained messages, there's a link below in the notes uh, where you can find a video which explains the MQTT retained messages in detail. But this is critical that this is required and unfortunately not all vendors support this. So please make sure that this is supported. Same is true for last will and testament. In order for the state management, which we will see later on in this series, um, to be supported 100%, you need last will and testament support. Also, unfortunately here, really make sure your vendor supports 100% MQTT on the client side, but as well as on the MQTT broker side. And last but not least, you really need a flexible security system. We are talking about critical data from machinery. We are talking about critical data from systems like ERP systems. And you really want to make sure that the um, sending um, MQTT clients only send data. And even if you would hack them or if you would get access to the credentials, that you're not able to um, yeah, consume data, which you aren't allowed to. So make sure that uh, you do that. So there is also an interesting blog post series, which is also uh, linked below, uh, called the MQTT Security Fundamentals, where you can learn more about security and why authentication authorization is so critical for these use cases. So now the bad news. If you plan to use a cloud vendor like AWS or Microsoft Azure with their respective IoT offerings, or as well as Google, MQT Sparkplug is not supported. Why? Because retained messages are not everywhere supported, as well as last will and testament. And also the security system is not always suited for MQT Sparkplug. So if you're relying on one of these cloud platforms, make sure that you're using as a product that supports this. But fortunately, most open source and commercial uh, products also work um, on Azure, on AWS, and on Google Cloud. So if you want to start with a proof of concept, what are the options? So option number one is you're using a free MQTT broker in the cloud, so, in, so you don't need to host your MQTT infrastructure yourself. Uh, for example, HiveMQ Cloud is an example which is completely free to use for up to 100 devices, as well as there are other vendors in the cloud which you can check out, um, who also some of them have a free plan, so you can actually get started for free for up to 100 devices, which is more than enough for most Sparkplug infrastructures. Or if you want to deploy it on your local machine or even already um, on your shop floor for a proof of concept, you have open source options like um, Mosquito, which is a very lightweight um, MQTT broker. Or if you want to go more the professional route, but still want to uh, stay open source, there's the HiveMQ Community Edition, which is also completely free to use and has a MQTT engine you can use its open source. 
The links are also in the notes below. If you're going to production, you really want to make sure that you have a production-ready MQTT platform. So there are different options on the market. One of them is the HiveMQ MQTT platform, which is specifically designed for mission-critical environments, provides high availability as well as a lot of advanced security features. You can also check it out. Also, the links are below. So in order to sum up here, make sure that you have a 100% MQTT 3.1.1 compatible infrastructure. And if you have that, you're good to go with Sparkplug uh, because there aren't really a lot of requirements here. And about the specific components uh, which we have in Sparkplug, this is something we will have in a later video. So stay tuned, subscribe below, so you uh, will get a notification as soon as a new video is, is up. Uh, we plan to have a very in-depth series here with the Sparkplug Essentials. And also, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Thank you.